Sean Mice here. And uh, in these uncertain times, I, uh, Pam Maldonado approached me a few days ago. Uh, she received a message from the Lord, let's, let's call it that, uh, that she just felt urgently that I should be uh, doing a call like this on a daily basis to give you encouragement. And uh, today's we did it, literally, we planned it about 40 minutes ago. I gave her the okay about an hour ago. I said, all right, I'll do these. I uh, spent some time with the Lord on it over the weekend and said, all right, I'll do these. Now, the intent was that we're going to make an attempt. And obviously, this is all real time. So we don't know what things will look like going forward. This is a time for pivoting. This is a time for action. And sometimes you just got to get out there. We're in uncharted waters. So just as various folks are having to make decisions about things they never thought that they would, we're going to make these on the fly. The idea is that I'll have someone with me each day, uh, someone, uh, a, someone of faith that can share a perspective as well. And so whether that'll look like some discussion or whether it'll look like me interviewing them or them interviewing me or both of us sharing for five minutes. However, the onus is on me today because we had 20 minutes to prepare and didn't get a yes back from someone that we uh, asked with 20 minutes notice. So let, let's do this. Sean Mize here. I'm going to open up in a word of prayer. Father, I come before you right now and I, I, these devastating times, I thank you for those folks that are going to turn towards you for strength rather than the media and rather than the secular world, but they're going to turn to you for strength. Father, even as we set this up for these next few weeks, few months, however long the intensity of the crisis is, and, and for as long as, as you ask me to share and to partner with others to share, uh, Father, I ask that you'll give us the wisdom to do what you would have us to do, that it wouldn't be man's wisdom, that there wouldn't be uh, uh, a power struggle or arrogance or, or anything like that, but God, that we would just point, shine the light on you and that we do it the way you would have us to do it. We pray in Christ's name, thankfully, amen. With that said, I want to share a few verses with you. Uh, Psalm 37 is a powerful passage for me personally in life. I don't know about you, but I've been through some rough things in my life. And, um, you know, I've, I've never been through, none of us have ever been through a world crisis that has this level. Obviously, I've been through things personally in my life that have been more gut-wrenching for me personally than this crisis is for me personally. But for those folks that are laying on a ventilator and can barely breathe, and if something doesn't change the next two days, they're going to perish, um, I've never been through that. And many of you have never been through that. Now, some of you, like me, have been really close to death, but maybe not gasping for our last breath. And so I think that this is a time where we've got to all come together and not focus on whose struggle is worse or bigger or badder, but just say, hey, how can I meet the need in the world? But today I want to share with you out of chapter 37, a couple of verses, two or three verses that give me strength and I want to pass that strength on to you. I want to move to verse 6, 7. Um, my goodness, 3. Psalm 37, 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. So Psalm 37, 3, I, I think that sometimes we look at that as an aspirational verse. We, we look at that as a good times verse. So things are doing good, or we're perhaps coming out of a bad time, and we say, fine, we'll trust in the Lord, we'll do good, and the promise is that we'll dwell, dwell in the land and we'll be fed. And sometimes when we combine that promise with some other aspirational verses in the word, we come up with a concept that says that if we're following God, that good things are going to happen, that he's going to bless the work of our hands, and that we're going to move, we're going to move forward. But I want to flip that just a little bit. You see, the Bible tells us that God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And, and so I believe that while the world may think that me having a positive attitude right now during this time of crisis would be unthinkable, 
or that would be un, unright. I believe that God is the same yesterday, today, and, and, and in the future. And I therefore believe that this verse holds for us now, even as people are perishing, even as the economy is tanking, even as our own finances may be drying up, even as we don't know if we're going to be able to go to the grocery store in three weeks. Trust in the Lord and do good, so shall I dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. But now, now I want to move to the last two verses, Psalm 37, 39 through 40. I want to read them first and then comment on them as it, as it pertains to our situation right now. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble, and the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Now, first of all, I want to say this. This is a wicked disease. This is a wicked disease. This is a disease right out of the pit of hell, all right? This is a wicked disease, and the enemy is using this, this disease to weaken the people. This, the enemy is, is using this to weaken the economy, to weaken the resolve of the people. What the enemy doesn't know is that God's people are rising up right now and are rising up to fight the virus. Uh, folks that follow God and are not following God are both as doctors experimenting with different drugs immediately. They're not doing five years worth of tests because people are dying today. We don't have five years to come up with perfect tests. People are dying today. And doctors, secular doctors and faith doctors both are coming together and they're using their brains and they're looking at what's in their locker and they're saying, someone's dying here. And in three days, they're not gonna live anymore. I don't care what the law says. I am going to take a, a medicine that I think might help and I'm going to try it out and I'm going to see what happens. And, and obviously this is life or death. And if they begin to see results, then they're able to iterate quickly. They know the world doesn't have five years. Here's the thing. When the enemy unleashed this, he didn't realize that God was in control. He should know that God's in control, but he didn't realize it. And he didn't realize how God's people were going to stand up and they were going to fight back. And this disease is not going to decimate 3% of the world's population because God's in control, because God's people are turning to him. And because as, as, as a world, one human race, we are rising up together by the power of God to fight what's going on around us. I want to encourage you today, no matter what you're going through personally, the word tells us salvation of the righteous is of the Lord and he is their strength in the time of trouble. God is your strength in this time of trouble. And I wholeheartedly believe that if you will turn to him, no matter where that you're at, all right, there's, there's no room for arrogance here. If we will all turn to him and we will say, God, please give us the strength that we need. He's right there. He's going to be your strength in time of trouble. Word says the Lord shall help them and deliver them them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Trust in the Lord and he is going to deliver you through this crisis. And wherever you're at, I would encourage you to draw closer to the Lord. You know, if you've already got a close relationship with him, take, take this as a call to action to say, Lord, how can I draw closer to you and how can I bring others closer to you? Okay. If you've been fighting the Lord for a few years, I would encourage you, spend some time with the Lord today and say, Lord, is it time for me to stop fighting you? Is it time for me to come back to you? Is it time for me to make a new commitment to following you? Is it a time for me, is it a time for me to draw closer to Jesus? Folks, I would encourage that we put politics aside. I would encourage that we put religion aside and, and put, put theology aside and draw together and say, Lord Jesus, how can we draw closer to you? How can we follow you? Lead us out of this crisis. All right, folks, with that said, I'm, I'm going to wrap up. It, it is very difficult for me in the natural to do a 12-minute teaching. It's very difficult, but I believe that if you're going to uh, be encouraged every single day and be able to know confidently that you can just show up here and in 15 minutes, you'll get daily inspired and you'll be able to go out into the world and you'll be able to share with others, perhaps what you get from me and from others that you're, that, that you're gaining from, that you're able to go out. I want to give you a basically a morning um, encouragement so that you can then go out and encourage the world. 
So th since this is our first one, I do want to take a couple of minutes here. First of all, I want, to, I want to thank Pam Maldonado for organizing this. She set the link up. All I had to do was show up. So I want to say thank you. Uh, secondarily, the idea here is that a person of faith, someone that I trust personally, will be here with me each day. And these folks will rotate and they will be able to give you encouragement as well. And so I don't know exactly what that will look like. If you are a person of faith and I trust you, please reach out to me. Please do not be offended if you reach out. We are, we are getting an amazing number of requests to do amazing number of things. And if, if, if I don't know you yet, then you'll have to build some trust with me before I trust you, okay? This is about trust. And those of you that follow me, that those of you that watch me, um, you trust me and you trust me to only present to you people that I have faith in. And, and so obviously, if, if you're a trustworthy person, but you come to me and, and, and introduce yourself to me, but I don't know who you are, there's going to have to be a period of trust building. And you may have to be relentless and, and persistent to be able to get through uh, to the place where I'm perhaps able to trust you in the future. And then I can introduce you to people that, that trust me. Trust is a imp very, very important thing in, in these dangerous times in which we live. And so I want to encourage you folks that before you rush to introduce someone uh, that, that you haven't known very long to your circle, that you know that you trust that person um, because it's going to be important to the folks that are responding. Father, we come before you. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for Pam. Uh, for, for doing the legwork and the hard work to make this happen. Father, we thank you for being able to come together when we ask that you'll give us wisdom as we do this so that we can genuinely change and touch lives. We pray in Christ's name, thankfully. Amen.